Apple revealed macOS 26 Tahoe a couple months ago, and it'll likely be released publicly by the end of September, so let's go over all the new features you can expect to see. First is this new liquid glass interface. You can see how the look of the dock has changed, how the look of icons have changed. There's a little bit of a glimmer around the edges. This also applies to widgets. And if you take a look up here at the menu bar, the background is now completely transparent, although that can be changed in settings. Now let's take a closer look at the redesigned icons, starting with preview, next text edit, stickies, photo booth, migration assistant, Macintosh HD, which looks less like an actual hard drive and more like a modern solid state drive, iPhone mirroring, font book, disk utility, digital color meter, contacts, clock, calendar, automator, which I think looks pretty cool, chess, and the trash can. This is what it looks like empty, and this is what it looks like full. Also, Launchpad has been renamed Apps, and it's sort of been combined with Spotlight. There are also some new cursors in Mac OS Tahoe. The default cursor is more rounded off. The text cursor, crosshairs is also rounded. Zoom in. The hand has been simplified to look less like a glove. And I must say, it does look very similar to the Windows pointer hand. Here is move, resize, and resize again. So as you can see, Apple is really going for a more rounded, softer, modern, simple appearance with liquid glass in macOS Tahoe. And you can also see this in Windows. For example, here is Finder, and the corners are really rounded off compared to macOS Sequoia. While sidebars and buttons look like they're sort of hovering over the window instead of being integrated into the window. And when I select something in the menu bar, you can see even the background button is rounded off compared to macOS Sequoia. And to the left of menu items, we have symbols, which previously were not there. Sliders and toggles also have a liquid glass effect. As I adjust the slider here, it turns into a piece of transparent glass. And this also happens when you click a toggle button. And up here in the menu bar, Control Center has been completely redesigned. And we'll get to the functionality of Control Center later on. First, I want to take a closer look at sidebars in macOS Tahoe. In macOS Sequoia, sidebars did have transparency, but it was affected by the content behind the window rather than the content inside the window itself. Now, this never really made much sense to me since I don't really care what's happening behind what I'm doing. I care more about what's happening on the active window. In macOS Tahoe, Apple has changed this behavior. Sidebars now hover over your content. So as you can see, I'm zooming in on this photo and it's actually showing through the sidebar. It's applying a refraction effect and it's pretty useful because I can keep track of where my content is and I have a sense of context, whereas before it would be completely lost behind the sidebar. There's also a hide sidebar button that you'll find across the system in macOS Tahoe. What's also interesting is I can shrink this window to its smallest size and that sidebar will not disappear. In Sequoia, if you shrink a window, for example, in the Photos app to its smallest possible size, that sidebar would automatically hide itself. And then when you enlarge the window again, it would come back. Now, unfortunately, not all apps have this liquid glass effect. If we take a look at Keynote here, you can see that the buttons and sidebar and even sliders don't have that liquid glass effect applied yet. Hopefully, Apple will update these apps in the coming months. There's also a new way to customize the design of macOS. If we go into System Settings and look under Appearance, you'll find a new section labeled Folder Color. Here, you can actually change the color of folders across the system. Here's graphite, there's purple, and here's orange. Now you may not be happy with these default color options, so you can actually go here to choose color and pick from a color slider that allows you to dial in the specific hue that you're looking for. And if you're trying to match the color of your wallpaper, you can actually use the color picker and choose exactly which shade you want. 
There's also a new section called Icon and Widget Style. Here you can customize the appearance of icons just like on iOS 26. There's default, dark, which you can set to always be dark or only turn dark at nighttime, clear, which can also be set to a clear dark shade or a light clear shade. Then there's tinted, which matches the color that you set your folders to be. So you can go down here and change the color of your icons and folders. This color also applies to widgets too. There's also a new way to differentiate your folders. By right clicking and selecting customize folder, you can actually add symbols to make it visually distinct from other folders in the system. You can also change the color of individual folders using this button too. There's also a new animation when dropping something into a folder. As you can see, the folder sort of opens up and lets that new file into the icon, which I think is pretty cool. And compared to macOS Sequoia, the screensaver area has been moved to the top of the wallpaper section. And in this same wallpaper section, you can actually customize the clock appearance. You can change the font appearance and the weight. Also, Apple has finally moved the volume indicator out from the middle of the screen. They already did this on iPhone with iOS 13 six years ago, but now if you look, the volume indicator now appears at the top right instead of being at the center of your screen and covering your content. What's also pretty cool is that if you start changing the volume, you can actually come over here with your cursor and drag the slider too. Now, unfortunately, Apple still hasn't given us a simple way to scan and remove files that we no longer need. Instead, they suggest storing all your files in iCloud, which quickly fills up and then prompts you to pay a subscription for more storage space. That's why I still recommend using Clean My Mac to locate and erase large junk files. Now, they were nice enough to sponsor this video, but Clean My Mac is an app I've been using for over five years now. It was actually updated recently to match the appearance of macOS Tahoe, and I think it looks great. But what's even better is what it can do. Clean My Mac is a simple all-in-one solution for deleting cache buildup, temporary files that you no longer need, and large files that you may have forgot about. This frees up your Mac storage space so you can avoid paying for the higher tiers of iCloud storage, which can be up to $60 a month. And what's even better is that you can also use Clean My Mac to free up your iCloud storage space too, with a new feature called Cloud Cleanup. It identifies files that are already being stored on your Mac and large files that you might consider deleting. That way, you can get as much value out of your existing Mac and iCloud storage without paying for more. You can try out Clean My Mac free for seven days and then save 20% by using my code Apple Explained. All right, now let's take a look at new functionality in the Notes app. If you go up to File and down to Export As, you'll find a new option for exporting as a markdown file. In System Settings, the previous Control Center section has been replaced by Menu Bar, likely because the options within this section has more to do with the Menu Bar, and Control Center itself is technically part of the Menu Bar anyway. Here you can choose which controls you want to appear in the Menu Bar, and you can actually disallow third-party controls from appearing there completely, something you could never do in Sequoia. There's also a new Add Controls button that brings up a gallery to show you all of the controls you can add to Control Center or the menu bar. You can scroll through them here and easily drag them in and also customize the order so you can rearrange the buttons and even right click and resize them. Here I can bring this up to medium. On focus, I can bring this up to large and then I can make them smaller again. You can even add controls from third-party apps and iPhone apps. There's also a new capability in iPhone mirroring that allows live activities from iPhone to appear in the menu bar on Mac. And when you click on it, it'll open iPhone mirroring and take you to that live activity. And the phone app is finally coming to the Mac for the first time. Now the Mac has been able to make and receive calls through iPhone since Mac OS X Yosemite in 2014, but there was never a dedicated phone app. Instead, calls had to be initiated through the Messages or FaceTime apps. So why, after 11 years, did Apple finally make a phone app for Mac? Well, I think it's in preparation for a 5G MacBook rumored to be released next year, but today this phone app is bringing call screening, hold assist, and live translation to the Mac, giving it full feature parity with iPhone. There's also a dial pad to manually enter a phone number, while recent calls and voicemails will automatically be synced from iPhone. 
There's also an improved interface for incoming calls. Instead of appearing as a narrow notification banner, it's now a larger square panel featuring the caller's contact poster. And the Journal app is now coming to the Mac after being on iPhone for two years. And it has the same functionality like creating entries, adding photos from your photo library, or even taking a photo in that moment using your MacBook's camera, adding a location, or even creating an audio recording on the fly. And of course, all these entries will be synced across your Mac, iPhone, and iPad. And the Games app is coming to Mac at the same time as iPhone. Previously, Mac users could access games through the App Store, there was an Arcade section if you subscribe to Apple Arcade Plus, and there was a Play section to discover and download other games for Mac. But the new dedicated games app has some unique functionality, like a continue playing section, which is similar to the continue watching function on Apple TV, making it easy to quickly jump back into a game you were playing. There's also social features to see what games your friends are playing, and to compare each other's skills with leaderboards. Under Library, you can view your own achievements and see a list of all the games you've ever played. The last new app in macOS Tahoe is called Magnifier. It's actually a really useful feature if you're struggling to read something far away or you're reading text on a piece of paper that's just too small. Let's say you're trying to read the text on the back of this book, but you can't find your glasses. Click this button to show detected text and then hold the text up to the camera and it'll begin reading it. This not only works with the built-in camera, but also with the camera of any connected iPhone. Next, let's talk about the Preview app. It has a nice new feature. While in dark mode, go up to View, and then select Use Dark Appearance for PDF. And this will change the background of that PDF to match the dark mode. And this effect will automatically turn off when you switch off dark mode. Now let's talk about Safari. If we go to settings here, you can see under tabs that Apple has removed the option to switch from standard or compact tab views. Instead, in macOS Tahoe, they've sort of combined these two modes together. For example, Safari's new tab bar automatically changes color depending on the website background. Here you can see the dominant color is red, so the header changes to red. In this website, it's blue. Back here, it's in dark mode, so it turns black, and on the start page, it goes back to its default gray. This is the same effect that would happen in the previous version of Safari, only in compact view. While the website address is permanently fixed at the top of the window, just like when it was in the previous standard tab view. The problem is a lot of people don't like this color matching toolbar, so you are able to turn it off in settings under appearance, show color in tab bar. As I turn this off, you can see it turns back to its neutral color. When I turn it on, it matches the website. Shortcuts in macOS Tahoe now has automations. So if I go here to automation, click the plus button, you can see I can trigger an automation depending on different parameters. For example, when an alarm is stopped, a time of day, when I get a certain email, when I get a certain message, or when I connect to Wi-Fi. Now remember earlier when I said Launchpad no longer exists and it's been replaced by something called apps? Well, let's look at that right now. When you click apps here, you'll see what appears sort of like Spotlight but there's also a list of all your apps underneath. So in macOS Tahoe, this is now how you quickly access your apps and how you search the system. You'll also notice if you press the spotlight button on your keyboard, the spotlight search comes up just like it previously did without the apps being listed underneath. Here, if you search for something, you'll find a list of default filters underneath. So if I only want to search pages, I can click that and then only pages files will appear. You can also do this with new buttons that are to the right of this search bar. If I only want to search applications, I can click this button. And if I only want to search files, I can select that one. This will also search files on your iPhone if it's connected via iPhone mirroring. But there's a third button here called Actions, and this is completely new in macOS Tahoe. Here you can do things like create a note or send an email quicker than before. Instead of navigating to the Notes app and creating a new note, I can simply add a quick key. For example, an N for new note. And then when I'm in the Actions bar, I can just type an N, enter. And this is essentially a quick way to create a new note. I can title it Video Idea in iCloud Notes, hit enter, 
and here we are with our new note already made. And this sort of shortcut can be done with all kinds of actions, including sending a message, showing stories, sending an email, opening a book, and even randomly generating a number. But what's really cool is the last button here on the right called clipboard. This will show you a history of everything you've ever copied in the last eight hours. Now I haven't copied anything recently, so it says no results found. But if I do, you'll see it appear. For example, copying this text one after the other will make them all appear in this clipboard. It even shows you the times that you copied the item. Let's say I wanna drop this into Keynote. I can pull it up here and just click and drag and there is the text that I copied. Now let's take a look at messages because there's a couple new features here. Here you can change conversation backgrounds and even adjust its appearance with different filters. There's also support for polls, group chat indicators, and Apple Pay in group messages. While the clock app now has an adjustable snooze duration, just like on iOS 26. So instead of being stuck at nine minutes, you can change it to something anywhere from one minute to 15 minutes. Now, if you've ever used a MacBook in a car or a plane, you may have felt a little motion sick. So Apple has tried to prevent that in Tahoe with vehicle motion cues. You can find it in the settings app under accessibility and then motion. At the bottom, you'll see vehicle motion cues, which you can switch on. You'll see dots appear around the edge of the screen, and you can customize these dots by making them different colors, making them larger, and even adding more dots. Under Read and Speak, there's a new feature called Accessibility Reader, which lets you open text from any app into a new window that not only lets you adjust the legibility, typeface, and size, but also read the text out loud with speeds from 0.8 to two times. I actually like using this for Apple news articles since for some reason the Mac doesn't support audio articles like on iPhone and iPad. So using Accessibility Reader lets me listen to the article while doing something else. There's also a new name recognition feature that allows the Mac to detect if it hears anyone saying your name in your vicinity and then it notifies you. So those are all the new features coming to Mac OS Tahoe, which is expected to be publicly available later this month. This is Greg with Apple Explained. Thanks for watching till the end, and I'll see you in the next video.